Welcome to a Legendarium special about Empress Anna, Russia's Mad Tsarina. In this episode, we will talk about the life and reign of one of Russia's most outrageous empresses. Anna, in full Anna Ivanovna, was born January 28, 1693 in Moscow, the daughter of Tsar Ivan V and niece to Peter the Great. Her father fell into vegetative states frequently and could not walk without leaning upon his courtiers. Unsurprisingly, Tsar Ivan V died when Anna was three years old and she came under the control of her deeply religious mother. Many knew her as a spiteful child with a mean streak. Several noted her lack of manners and vulgar attitude. Some called her Ivana the Terrible. Few grew sad when she left Moscow for her uncle's newly founded city of St. Petersburg. Instead of her mother's plain living, St. Petersburg glittered with splendor. The sheltered girl took to the decadence of high society like a duck to water. At the age of 17, she wed Frederick William, ruler of the Baltic Sea Coast Duchy of Courland, on October 31, 1710. When Anna married the Duke, her uncle gave her 200,000 rubles for her dowry. She spent part of it on a gold-embroidered cape and a bedazzled tiara. After the ceremony, Uncle Peter staged a copycat wedding with two dwarves acting as the groom and bride while the court looked on. Far more tragically, Uncle Peter challenged the bridegroom, Frederick William, to a drinking contest. The binge drinking left Duke Frederick William so ill that he died on the journey to Courland after their wedding. With Frederick's ridiculous end, Anna became a teenaged widow. She sent out 300 letters to various family members looking for a new husband. Though she did not find one, Anna remained in Courland for 20 years. She grew into a tall, ample, and jowly woman with black hair and a formidable presence. Anna kept a musket by her window just so she could pick it up and blast away at the birds on her lawn. On other days, she ordered her servants to unleash wild animals in the royal park so she could hunt them down. In 1730, Tsar Peter II died without designating an heir. His privy council, the ruling body of Russia, offered Anna the Russian throne. In exchange, the privy council expected her to give responsibility for governing to them and that she never remarry or name an heir. While Anna accepted these terms at first, she learned that many wealthy and powerful boyars opposed the Privy Council. Emboldened, she tore up the agreement on February 25th, abolished the Privy Council, and sent its leading members into exile. That day, a blood-red aurora borealis appeared over the sky, which many took as an evil omen. Anna then took Ernst Johann Biron of Courland as her lover and chamberlain, despite his being married. This led some Russians to blame the excesses of her reign on Biron and a clique of Germans, but Russians carried out what ensued. Empress Anna faced a rival in her cousin Elizabeth, the only surviving child of Peter the Great. But because Elizabeth had been born out of wedlock, she remained unmarried. Nonetheless, she attracted a clique of friends, including powerful army officers who saw her as an alternative to Anna. The rivalry between the two grew toxic, and Anna outright forbade her cousin from marrying. When Elizabeth took a lover named Alexis Shubin, Empress Anna tore out his tongue and exiled him to Siberia. When Elizabeth's clique attempted to remove Empress Anna, her spies beat them bloody and then slit open their noses with daggers. Far worse, a series of poor harvests struck Russia. Peasants became reduced to eating clay, grass, and sometimes each other. Some sold their clothes for seed money, leaving them unclothed during the harsh Russian winters. Anna's court threatened local officials with the confiscation of their property if they failed to collect taxes. More than 30,000 peasants went to Siberia on charges of secreting away grain in this atmosphere of fear. To Anna's credit, some of the money wrenched from Russia's famished peasants went to founding a postal service, rebuilding the navy, and founding fire brigades in Moscow and St. Petersburg. 
Of course, Anna also spent on her personal pleasure. She built elaborate ice sites for her amusement and kept an entourage of dwarves, treating them with generosity or cruelty depending on her mood. Once she fired a charge of birdshot at her court jester and knocked him backwards into a fountain. However, the main butt of the Empress's cruel sense of humor became Prince Mikhail Alexeyevich Glotzin. She made him do public imitations of a hen laying eggs as punishment for marrying an Italian and converting to Roman Catholicism. Empress Anna also ordered him to marry one of her maids named Avdatya. She also ordered the couple to enter an ice palace constructed on the frozen river Neva during the winter of 1739 and 1740. She ordered them taken there in a cage mounted on the back of an elephant while dressed as clowns. Crowds jeered and booed them as they marched through St. Petersburg. Anna's ice palace included a facade decorated with ice statues, a garden of trees and shrubs carved from ice, and an ice bathhouse. Architect Peter Europkin even made furniture from solid ice. Needless to say, this did not make for a comfortable home during the harsh Russian winter. During the summer of 1740, the ice palace melted and Galitzin went on to more comfortable surroundings in Italy. Sadly, his wife, Avdatya, died only a few months later. One minister declared Anna's reign comparable to a storm-threatened ship manned by a pilot and crew who are drunk. During the Ice Palace affair, Baron married his son to Anna's niece, Anna Leopoldovna. Much to the Empress's delight, young Anna gave birth to a son named Ivan in August 1740. She immediately designated the infant as her heir and Barana's regent. This left her niece Anna, who hoped to follow her and to the throne, bitterly disappointed. However, Anna did not have to cope with the consequences of her choice. Her health began to decline throughout 1740 as a kidney stone passed through her system with agonizing slowness. She died of a kidney ulcer on October 17, 1740. Though Baron briefly took power, Anna's hated cousin Elizabeth seized power, sent Baron into exile, and placed the infant Yvonne in a dungeon. And in a final insult to Empress Anna, her bitterest enemy became her successor. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day. Day.